And good evening, Manitoba Major Junior Hockey League fans. Welcome in to gshow.ca of G Show Productions MMJ Chow Game Day Playoff Edition for the first time here in the Final Four from Southdale Arena. So it's the visiting two seed Pemna Valley Twisters coming on down to Southdale Arena into Winnipeg, Manitoba for the first time in this year to face off against the third seed the St. Boniface Reals. I'm your host for this pregame show, Graham the G-Show Forsyth, also your play-by-play -play commentator for this matchup. Apologies about connection here tonight. It's been a bit spotty, so there might be times where the stream is going to look laggy. We're going to try our best for that not to happen, but something's going to be out of our control tonight. Uh, this matchup between the Reals and Twisters we brought to you by McCann Fasters and Tools, your one-stop shop for all your industrial needs. Be sure to check out their store locations in Brandon and Winnipeg today. Also, check out their website at McCannonFasters.shop. They're your one-stop shop for all your industrial needs. We're brought to you by Terrico as well, serving Manitoba producers for over 80 years in the agricultural industry. For more information about why they're so trusted, be sure to check out their website at terrico.ca and to Goaltenders, your goalie's personal video review service. Be sure to check out their website for more details at gordytullisongoalies.ca. And speaking of goaltenders, well, this matchup is going to feature two excellent ones. Uh, whether it's, you know, Enzer Laroque in the net for this Pemina Valley Twisters team, I think they're going to uh, be pretty comfortable. Uh, Ashton Haworth, of course, should be getting the net tonight. Again, for the St. Boniface Reals. If we take a look at the updated bracket, last night the Canucks take, took a 2 to nothing series lead over the Charleswood Hawks. Charleswood, of course, winning in a thrilling game seven matchup against St. Vitale to qualify to make it into the final four, but they got their work cut out for them. So do the St. Boniface Reals down one to nothing, looking not to go down uh, two to nothing in this series tonight. It was tied 1-1 after the first last game in game one on Sunday night, but it was Pemna Valley who would come away with a big third period in terms of the goals category two uh, also outshot that Reals team by quite a bit 44 to 16 throughout the matchup special teams was on fire for Pemina Valley in that matchup as well going two for five holding the Reals to their only goal on the penalty kill uh, in terms of the Reals on the power play and yeah McNaughton continues to impress for the St. Boniface Reals team Of course, scoring the only goal in that one. It was Weave, Van Dines, and Thomas, the goal scorers for the Pemna Valley Twisters. With Logan Enns getting the victory in that matchup. But as for the way these two teams stack up, uh, a lot of talent, top-end talent at that. Merrick DeGrave leading all forwards in points for this Pemina Valley Twisters team. On defense, it's been uh, Jacob Carroll's that has led this Pemina Valley Twisters team in points with five. As for the Reals, as mentioned, Ty McNaughton leading this team in goals uh, and tied for the lead in points along with Nate Hines, who has been playing a complete offensive game in this postseason so far. Connor Davis also tied there, and uh, as you can see, Aaron Nielsen with five, Cole Davis with four points there. But as for... Uh, the Reals, you know, on average, they've been out shooting opponents by, you know, a, a good average in these playoffs, but it wasn't the case on Sunday, of course. Uh, for this Pemina Valley Twisters team, you can make the argument that even though they swept the Raiders Junior Hockey Club, that they didn't even play their best hockey in that first round. Well, you could make an argument that it was their best game of the postseason uh, this past Sunday, of course, with a uh, longer layoff than two days, uh, a three-day layoff at that. Both teams should be well-rested and ready to go for this matchup here tonight. And as we take a look at the last five matchups for these teams, I mean, for the Twisters, right? They swept the Raiders Junior Hockey Club, but three of those matchups were one-goal games. Their best 
uh, game of that first round was a 4 to nothing win. And for the Reals, they started off the first round with a bang, up 3 to nothing. lost two in a row to the Twins as they started to get the rest of their lineup going, but the Reals playing a very good a shutdown game in game number six of that series, putting up some good offense to clinch their ticket to the Final Four for the first time since 2014-15, where, of course, the Reals ended up going on to win the championship. But as for this matchup, we're just about done here in terms of the Zamboni driver making his final laps around the ice. You can see Aaron Nielsen and the rest of his teammates waiting. They just opened the door. You guys can't see it on your screen, of course. But yeah, expect for this Reals team, I feel like, to come out strong here tonight, looking for a better start, of course. I mean, even though it was tied 1-1, Throughout that first period, uh, shots-wise, it was not in favor of the Reals in that matchup at all. Look for them to, to play a better defensive team, try to at least, but at the same time, this Twisters team, very good on all ends of the ice, a big reason why they were the hottest team at one point in the MMJHL down the stretch. A complete team at that with uh, players that can score in all parts of the lineup, forwards and defense, and they also got the best goaltending tandem in the league in Owen LaRock and Logan Enns. Uh, if the Reals honestly want their best chance of coming out in this game with a victory tonight as well, not only will they need their team of forwards and defensemen to play better, but Ashton Haworth needs to be on his game. Uh, not to say he wasn't last game, I mean 44 shots faced, let up three goals on those shots. Pretty darn good performance from him, but he needs to elevate even higher. That's why they brought him in, to be a game stealer. We saw it, well, I had a chance to see it back here at Southdale in about February, I believe, when uh, he ended up stealing one, being a big reason why they beat the Junior Canucks uh, in the midst of uh, a long winning streak for them at that time for the Reals. We'll look for players like Aaron Nielsen to try to make his impact felt here tonight. Ty McNaughton, of course, as well on the top end. Boys for this Reals team. The referees are circling their way onto the ice right now. Uh, we're going to end off this pregame show, ladies and gentlemen, with this. Enjoy the game here tonight. Thank you for choosing gshow.ca on G Show Productions on our YouTube channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future uploads like this one. Should be a fantastic hockey game coming up. The Real is looking to even this up while the Twisters look to bring a 2 to nothing lead back home to Morris, Manitoba. The horn sounds about to get underway here soon, folks. Enjoy the game.
Well, we're here. Great to be here. For Graham Forsyth, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight's matchup, as always, on gshow.ca. Thank you for choosing us, your official broadcaster of the Manitoba Major Junior Hockey League. It'll be On the Rock getting the start here tonight for the Pemina Valley Twisters. A goals against average of under one at .75 throughout that first round. Ashton Haworth in net, of course, tonight for the Reals. This first period will be brought to you by Mick Hannon Fasters and Tools. McNaughton at the faceoff dot for the Reals and wins this one as we are officially underway here. As the Reals look to answer back in this series. Down one game to nothing as Puck ends up in the crease of Laroque and he covers things up here to get stopped in play here early on. That top line out for this Real's team is Nielsen who will take the draw for the Real's and ends up winning it but into the skates I believe the linesman who dropped it Pemina Valley Twisters maintained possession but turned over Nielsen sends it in deep on it first Jonathan Dick rims this around playing D to D to one of his teammates the Twisters look to break out they try going D to D again, trying to go over to number three and Mike Hepner. He plays this up the left side, giving chase for it is Xander Carroll. Gets there, but will be challenged by Keating. He gets to that puck first and ends up playing it up the board to Brzezinski, who plays it out. Hits a body of the Twisters in the neutral zone. Now off the leg of number four and Smith. He goes D to D. Smith gets it back in the neutral zone. Works it all the way in deep to the zone as is picked up first there by Derek Weeb, a goal scorer in game one. This gets sent down all the way. Van Dines plays it up to Weeb. Weeb unloads a shot, but that'll be blocked there by Renville. Weeb still in it with it in the corner. Rims it around to Carroll's. Plays it back down low to Weeb. Behind the net now. Weeb gets possession of it again. Plays it up to the point to number 24 and Jacob Carroll's. Going across there trying to was Weeb for a teammate, Angelica, but that deflects off of a Reals player's stick. So we get a face off here inside of the Real zone with 18.34 remaining. Draw will be to the glove hand side of Haworth. In this first period, brought to you by McCann Fasters and Tools, your one stop shop for all your industrial needs. Sure to check out their website at mccannonfasters.shop as well as visit their store locations in Brandon and Winnipeg. This goes all the way down for a nice and early here for the Reals. Meaning we'll get a face-off draw back inside of their end. This Pemina Valley Twisters team, of course, trying to make it back to the finals. They were there two years ago. Of course, there won't be a repeat of the finals from last year. St. Vital was eliminated by Charleswood this past Friday. But the Twisters and Canucks, funny enough, have met in the finals in two of the last four playoffs at that, or two of the last three that we've seen. This one intercepted by the Reals. Played up by Heinz into the neutral zone. Sent on to the stick of Davis. Connor Davis, that is, team captain. Takes a little bump in the corner down below. Into the slot. Now that one gloved down by Larocque. As he gets busy early here. Shots, I believe, now two to nothing in favor of the Reals here early. Face off will be taken by Sam Alsop for the Reals. Ends up partially winning that, but it'll be picked off by the Twisters. Played into the neutral zone, battling and hacking away there, number 15. And Mark Plett gets past Plett all the way down back into the Real zone, though. Saworth out to play it. Leaves it for a teammate. Not sure who that is. Keating it is. Plays it up. So that gets backhanded onto the glove of Elsef. He's in. Oh, stop made there by Larocque. It's in his pads. So we get a face off coming up here once again inside of the Twister zone. They take it. Number nine in Bergman ends up winning this draw, but it gets rimmed all the way around. Held in at the point by the Reals, played down low again. 
Twisters pick this puck up. I believe that is number three and Mike Hepner. Backhand pass shortly to a teammate. That's sent in by number 15 in Plett. Weird bounce off of something there. Bergman giving chase for Pemina Valley, but the Reals are going to make it out of this one. Live for the time being. Elsa battling with it. Gets this puck. Pick puck. It's a Twister. Plays it out into the slot, but that finds nobody. Held in, though, and sent in deep by Riel. Mike Hepner. Where's an A, of course, for this Real, for this Twisters team. Sends it up to Clark. Goes off of a body now of a Twister. Sends it in deep. Skirtson will be on it. His four check allows for his defenseman to send that in. Is number 25. And Southern. Picked up by Gertson now behind the net. Goes up to the point. Number five in Wood. Plays that across. That shot blocked. So it was Callan Russell who tried getting it by, but could not. Nice job there. A stay focused by the Reals. Picked up number 21 in Van Dines. Plays it back in his own end. I played up to Gertson, but all the way down. No icing on the play. As it'll be Van Dines in the corner. Gets this up to D-Man. Into the slot now for Gertson, but nice defense there by the Reals. Played out by Stepik. And the Twisters go off for a change. Smith will take some time. Feeds it up the right side of the neutral zone to Sepik. Played to number 88 in Nielsen. Trying to get to the net, but he'll be finally taken down around the net. This will be picked up. Riel's making their move. That shot, McNaughton will meet the glove. The flash of it by number 35 and own the rock. Getting a stoppage here with 15.41 remaining. Still scoreless here, three to nothing shots in favor of. The Reals on the board right now. Draw one by the Reals. Keating plays it over to Hira. He plays it to the net, tip there, oh, off of the backboards. Almost thought that Xander Carroll's played that into his open net for a sec, but just off the backboards. That goes off the backboards in the Reals end and it'll be picked up by Aiden Hira. Plays this up and it'll be played all the way into the twister zone for an icing. Another face-off coming inside of the Real zone. And yeah, good start for the Reals. You know, they're forcing some turnovers inside of the Twister zone. Getting some quality looks on LaRock. He's just dialed in so far. And I mean for this Twisters team. Expect for them, if it continues to be like this, to survive. Oh, and there it is, a goal! From the point. Speaking of, I was just going to say, look for them to make the most of their opportunities in this one. And they just did there. Nice job to win the faceoff. I'm not sure if that shot from Kyle Van Dines was tipped. But we'll get who scored that in just a moment here. So we update the scoreboard. It's the Twisters up by one here. With under five minutes gone in this period. Draw will be won by the Twisters again. Played up the left side and all the way down deep. It'll be Ethan Alsop. Turns this over, fan shot by a Twister. But they'll be on it again. We plays that down low for DeGrave. He gets bodied there, rubbed out by Ethan Alsop. But this puck gets played all the way out. Should be down for an icing most likely. As it is just that. Another face-off draw inside of the Riel's end. Winning the draws, the face-offs like that becomes more important against a team that's as good as this Twisters team is. Can make you pay on any opportunity you give them. Hines into the skates. Nice pass received there by Trot. Took it off the skates, plays it into the corner. That and Connor Davis out there, I believe. Is him trying to dangle by is Thomas, but nice body there by the Reals defense. Xander Carroll's being double teamed. Now takes Davis out behind the net. This goes up the boards. Golford there. Puck gets past him. It's now onto the stick of Bachnet. It's picked up by Hines. Carries it into the net. Hines rebound created, but no Real there to take it. Xander. Carroll's clears it away, but not quite out. As this ends up behind the net. Carroll's as well as Russell down below. 
as from side of the net there, and it scores! Nate Hines with his fourth of the postseason, picking up the loose puck in front. And the Reels have been able to get to the net here often early on in this game. They just haven't been able to capitalize up until then. Oh, the Rock not the cleanest on his rebound control, his teammates, not enough numbers there to clear that away. And Hines sticks with it. Ends up roofing this over. The outstretched pad. Left pad, that is, of Laroque. Just like that, we're tied up. The Reals in a game where they need to punch back to win this one in this series. Punch back early on here. Or to tie this series, that is. A long ways away from a winner at this point, as we're only in game two. That draw will be won by the Reals. D to D and up the boards to Sam Elsip. He tries to bat this with the glove by Clark. Having none of that, plays that down low. This gets rimmed around. Sent out now by the Reals, but picked up in the neutral zone by number nine in Bergman. Played now to a defenseman, past the red line, sent in past the net there of Haworth, occupied by him. It'll be Jacob Carroll's now team captain for this Twister squad. High stick, and it is just that for this Reals team. In this period, brought to you by McCann Fosters and Tools, we're tied up here all at one apiece. This draw will be won by the Reals, kicked up by Brzezinski onto the stick of Nielsen. He chips, trying to get past now, and number seven in Dick. Nielsen lays the body on Dick, but ends up on the ice, gets right back up. At the point, Reals keep it in. Sent down low again. They go to pressure on Dick. Hepner pokes that up, sent on net, save made by Laraki, covers it up. Nielsen was looking for the rebound potentially, but got none of it. I'm happy they got the sound system figured out, almost blew out my eardrums as well as probably everyone in this arena. Not sure how clear you could hear that moments ago. But Drustra won by the Twisters. Hepner behind his own net. Spun around before getting it over to number 11. Now, oh, played up now. Skating in. Jolliker tries sending that into the slot, but this will be intercepted, or rather contested by the Real as well. Onto the stick of McNaught and into center ice, but pass was not completed. At that picked up now by Merrick DeGrave. He moves to the middle. Jolliker loses his stick. DeGrave trying to dangle past a Riel, but nicely contested there. So Riel's get possession of the puck back. Played up the board, sent in deep. Back for Jolliker. Puck got past him, rimmed around separate side now, pinching up a. Twister's defenseman, picked up by DeGrave now by the Real's bench. He's working with it, plays it up to the point. That shot, wide of the net, but an offside on the play, so. Was not gonna count the shot anyway. Speaking of, six to one in shots for the Real's here with just over halfway left in this period. 11.39 remaining on the clock. Draw one by the Real's, that pass threaded. Number 15 and Zachary Dominico. Held in at the point by the Reals. Now a Stepic try getting that down low, but could not. Rimmed around by the Twisters, trying to get this out. They do into neutral ice. As on it, number 12 in Cohen Thomas given chase. Sent all the way down low into the Reals end. Again, played on to Stepic stick. Able to cradle this in now, kicks it out. To Dominico, back to the net. Dominico trying to go to Stepic, but he was out of stick eliminated. Nice defense there on the rush. Defending against the rush by the Twisters. So we got another face off in there, and it's 
Throw will be won by the Reals. Trying to get possession of it now. It's Hines battling away. That gets up to the point. Number two in Renville. Takes contact there from number 17 in Cody Clark. Picked up by the Twisters and they start to skate it out now. Sent all the way in. Not on net though. Off of the boards. Quick shot having to block it out away was Haworth. And sent out. For Connor Davis, with speed, Davis to the net, he shoots, and nice save by LaRock, rebound there by Davis. He got that into the padding, I believe, of LaRock, gets taken out into the boards afterwards. There's a bit of jawing and shoving behind the net. That's been one thing that's really stood out about Connor Davis, to me at least, in these playoffs. Not exactly like his skill with the puck. I mean, he's got that. He's got a nice shot, got nice hands, but what stands out the most, just his ability to seemingly feel like he's shot out of a cannon. So much speed from number 96. And a player that's been a huge part of the real success this season. And even heading back into last year, uh, speaking of, a twister gets taken out. The Reals with possession of this, playing this into the neutral zone. Picked up now by Sam Alsop. Sent in deep, or just into the twister zone. They play it off the boards. That's to Merrick DeGrave. He plays that across to Mike Hepner. Hepner now delays. Just past the blue line, his shot gets deflected into the ceiling. So we will get a face off, I believe, here coming up back in the Real zone. So both teams getting fresh legs onto the ice, getting a change at forward. Take the draw for the Twisters. Slade Southern up against Ty McNaughton. Who takes it here? It'll be Southern who wins it. But the Real is able to play this back down low. Jumping on that draw right away. Brzezinski sends this, flips this into the neutral zone where it's onto the stick of Nielsen now. Tries dangling to the outside but could not. This gets sent all the way into the neutral zone and Smith has to regroup into his own end. Saucer pass across off the boards of Keating. That one, unfortunate for St. Boniface. Almost a turnover for them. So I guess not that unfortunate, but still trying to get out of the zone. That pass fanned on into the neutral zone. Puck sent on net. Save made by Haworth. Smith doing a nice job to evade. One touch through the legs of Brzezinski and now sent all the way down deep by number 88, I believe, in Nielsen. Puck ends up into the bench of the Twisters. More pushing and shoving afterwards. This time it's Southern trying to go at it with, not too sure who that is for the Reals. I believe that is Brzezinski. as the Reals get a change. With this draw, won by the Reals and sent in deep by Dominico. Picked up Callan Russell. That pass into the neutral zone, sent all the way down for a nice and so another face off coming up here. in the Twister zone. Bocknecht now fighting with Weeb gets past him to the net. Upon entry, nice job of fighting for that puck in the neutral zone. Leroc has to make another save on the 11 shots he's faced so far. 11 to 2 in favor of the Reals in the shot category. As uh, faceoff will be back inside of the Twister zone. McNaughton unable to win that cleanly, tries to continue on the forecheck to get it. But can offer the time being. Bon with it in the neutral zone. Plett along that left side. Bachnack now stepping past the red line and sending it in deep. Played across D to D. 
Twister's able to send it in, but into the netting. This faceoff will stay outside of the Real zone. Closest to the Twisters bench. And so far, so good for the Reals in this game. I mean, in terms of the shots, he got outshot heavily last game against the Twisters. 44 to 16, as we've shown. You're already leading 11 to two, and you're doing some good things. You're transitioning out of the zone with some success. Pretty direct off of the entry. And forcing turnovers like that. Vitelli off the side of that. Bad bounce off the backboards, almost, for the Twisters. Reals can capitalize on it. Held in at the point. Sent in deep. Still won't exit the zone. Finally does for the Twisters. This played off the boards. Sent in again. And now it's Andrew Carroll's. Hits the middle seam there. To Guilford. Got it over to number 12 and Cohen Thompson, or Thomas that is. He plays that into the bench. Of the Reals, but yeah, I mean, some good direct entries. And yeah, some good jobs of them forcing turnovers off the four check inside of the Twister zone. Getting that puck to the net. Some dangerous chances created so far out of the 12 for this Reals team. One of those chances resulted in a goal. McNaughton kicked out of the draw. Brzezinski in to take it against number 25. In Southern, Southern lost it, but the Twisters on the forecheck. Pressuring Keating is Southern. Tried batting that with his stick down below, but couldn't. Kept in Heldon. Van Dyne's try playing that, but couldn't. It's picked up and skated out. Nice dangles by Brzezinski. Just past the line, sends it all the way in to the Twister zone. Just over seven minutes remaining. Turned over. That shot can't get on that. Lane covered up well by the Twisters. So Twisters with possession of it. Hepner spinning around below his goal line. Plays that off the boards. That gets played into the middle, onto the stick of Southern. Keaton now plays this up the left boards. Gets it over to a teammate, but turned over once again. Deflected in by this Twisters team and giving chase to Grave on Smith. Gave him a little Stick top there, more of a, almost a slash, but of course ain't gonna call that. DeGrave gets it back, saucer pass, trying to thread that to Weeb, ends up going off the backboard, so Weeb with it, spins around now, back down low to DeGrave, surveying his options, back to Weeb, his shot can't get unloaded on, nice defense there, disruption by a real stick as that gets cleared out. That top line though of DeGrave, Jolker, and Weeb, been a huge positive out of, uh, I mean, the few that the Twisters have compared to the Reals in this so far. Not as much zone time as they would like, and a lot of pucks being battered away so far. That gets played all the way down. No icing on the play, it's waved off. Weeb still out there giving chase and checking on Bachnett. He's able to make that first pass, though, into the neutral zone. Now the Reals gain entry into the zone. Down low, taken out, Jacob Carroll's the culprit on that one. No call on the play though, as the Twisters continue to break out into the Real zone. Puck along the boards, Pled battling. Jolliker still out there, DeGrave with them still. Real's able to get possession of this puck and skate it all the way down. Trying to play that to the middle. Sam Alsip, he's able to pick it up, trying to go into the slot, Alsip from the side of the net, ends up just missing on that. Kept down low by this Reals team, held in at the point, that shot deflected wide of the net. Now it gets played up top, Bachnet, his pass to the teammate, that shot ends up being blocked, Bachnet able to hold it in for the time being, that gets played on net for Leroc, that loose puck, Real is arguing that it should have not been blown dead right away. I think they got a case, a bit of a premature whistle. 4.38 remains. They're dominating the shot category here, 13 to two. Score is still tied though at one apiece. With 4.38 remaining. So we bring Mick Handlefasters and Tools back on the screen here 
your one-stop shop for all your industrial needs. Be sure to check out their store locations today in Brandon and Winnipeg, as well as their website at McCannonFasters.shop. That shot to the net, rebound there, loose puck, Real is trying to dig away at it, but can't, held in at the point, that shot blocked, nice job by the Twisters, but Real's get it right back, D to D higher, a quick pass sent over there to Davis, into the slot now, but Real's can't connect, Twisters looking to break out, that pass can't be made to Cohen Thomas. Another, Bunch of great A chances there for this Reals team. Cohen Thomas gets interfered with a bit in the neutral zone. This gets sent all the way down for an icing. I mean, you expect for this Reals team to back down. I mean, if you've talked to Zach Franco before, he's someone that focuses on preparation quite a bit. Preparation, he holds that very highly, as does a lot of coaches, but studies the game. He, of course, played some hockey over in Europe. And, of course, became not only the head coach, but the general manager of the Reals last season. And what a job he's done in these two years, making it back to the playoffs last year after they missed in 21-22. As the eighth seed in doing much better this season. One of the top three teams in the league finishing third. Speaking of, here they come. Ty McNaughton sends it on net. That one sticked into the netting. By number 35 in Owen LaRock. And yeah, for this Twisters team. I mean, a team last season that ends up losing in the first round to the Charleswood Hawks. They had a quality roster coming back though. Added in some good players. Owen LaRock, they added him in at the trade deadline. And I mean, Twister started the season off really poorly. But as they got together and more situated with each other, they started to roll and were one of the best teams in the second half. Weave makes Bocknet look silly in the corner there. Spun away from him as he went into the boards. Puck back into the neutral zone. And it'll be picked up by a weave. Leaves a little touch pass there for a teammate, but can't be picked up by a twister. So this gets sent in deep all the way again. Into the Real zone, off of the boards. But glove down by a weave. Delayed offside though on the play. So we'll get a face off just, out of, just outside of the Real zone. But one more word on the twisters, I mean, they were the sixth seed last season, and they gave the third seed last year in the Charleswood Hawks a battle. I believe taking them to seven games in that first round series where Charleswood would come out victorious. Funny enough, like the Twisters, Charleswood was one of the best, if not the best team in the second half of the season last year. D to D, Riel's go. That's Keating. Plays that into the neutral zone. Onto the stick of Hines. A little touch pass. Intercepted though. Onto the stick of Gertson now. He flips this in with the backhand. Trying to get in on the forecheck. First one on it there though is Hines. It's played off the boards. Trying to hop over the stick. The Reals tried to make that happen but couldn't. Picked up again. And Smith able to send this towards the Twisters blue line on a stretch pass. Twisters now though, looking to break out with speed. Coming in, Bergman trying to go across. Oh, nice save there by Hallworth to get across. Stopping Gertsen, other way. It's Keating, tries going across to Hines. Can't, loose puck there, picked up by the Twisters in the house. Flipped all the way into the neutral zone again. Bergman with a bunch of speed there moments ago. Hines now winding up, trying to get in. Dangles in, Hines still maintaining balance. Drops it back for Hira, almost an offside there on the play, but the refs let it go. This gets chipped all the way down deep. A minute 25 remaining. Nielsen got checked there along the boards. Held in at the point, Hepner now walking in. He'll be pressured, contested there by Hines. But this part gets sent down low. Played all the way around. Coming up on a minute left in regulation for this period. As that puck finally does get out. Hepner goes D to D with Dick. Onto the stick of Thomas. He sends that in. 
for the backboard. Xander Carrolls gets on it there first. Getting positioning on Rendell. Puck gets sent out. Nielsen will give chase on Dick. Trying to beat Dick to the puck there. We'll see if he does. Nielsen able to rub him out. Hepner now cutting him off. Plays it up the left side of the boards. Held in at the point, though. That shot blocked, block net. Loose puck sent on net there by Nielsen, but wide of it. Under 30 to go now. Riel still with it. Playing it to the front of the net, but can't get there. It was played into the neutral zone. Sent in by Golford. Challenging Bachneck. Bachneck able to get there, but turns over this puck onto the stick. Up to Grave. His shot gets blocked from the slot there now. Floats into the glove. That puck did into Haworth. Elsa, Ethan, that is. Kind of ragdoll and Josh Golford. Continuing to shove at him. Golford kind of smiling and laughing from the looks of his, his facial expressions. 8.1 seconds remain here in this period. A twister gets sent out of the zone. We're out of the face-off circle. Weeb on to take it for this twister squad. Ends up losing it to the net, though. That ends up in the slot onto the stick of Hines. He sends that out all the way into the neutral zone. And with that, just like in game number one in Morris on Sunday night, we go into... The first intermission tied up at one apiece, 16 to four are the shots on the scoreboard right now for the St. Boniface Reals. A really good period for them, but even though the Twisters only had four shots, dangerous on all of their chances. A really good four check from them, a team that likes to chip it and go and get on the four check. But for this Reals team, something I really like from them is how direct they were out of their own end. A few turnovers here and there but uh, much of the good outweighed the bad. Good job on them for getting in on the four check too in the twister zone and creating some turnovers that way. Some shots were tough for Owen LaRock to handle in that period. And hey, we got 40 miles to go in this one. 20 immediate miles coming up. The next 20 minutes here on gshow.ca. 1-1 is the score tied here between the Reals, the home team and the visitors. The Twisters. This first period was brought to you by Mick Cannon Fasters and Tools. Thank you to them for supporting Manitoba Major Junior Hockey League hockey here on the network. Uh, be sure to check out their website at mickcannonfasters.shop as well as checking out their store locations in Brandon and Winnipeg. They're your one-stop shop for all your industrial needs. We're going to throw to our sponsorship promo screen. And we'll be back in about five to seven minutes here, maybe shorter than that here. On gshow.ca on gshow productions for game two of the final four series between the home side, the Reals, and the away side, the Twisters.
Welcome back into Southdale Community Center, Community Center, or Southdale Arena, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for period two coming up here between the visiting Pemina Valley Twisters and the home side, the St. Boniface Reals. After the first 20, it's tied up at one apiece. Of course, on the Rock getting the start tonight. His first of this series, Logan Enns got the start in game number one. But as for how the first period scoring went, it was the Twisters who opened up the scoring. With number 26, Kyle Van Dines, his second of the playoffs, assisted by Merrick DeGrave at 4.49 into the period. For the St. Boniface Reals, Nate Hines would tie things up shortly after at 6.13 into the period with his fourth of the postseason assisted by Cole Davis and Carson Dubois. Yeah, a great period for the Reals outside of letting in that goal. To start things off, they outshot the Twisters 16-4. There were no penalties in that period, so no special teams as of yet. Got a bit chippy at times, uh, some pushing and shoving, some scrapping after the whistles. The linesmen, refs getting in between the players to break things up before things escalate. Would not be surprised if, you know, we could see a fight break out in this game. It is playoff hockey, of course, and uh, yeah, both of these teams... Seemed amped up at this point. As both teams make their way back onto the ice, I'm uh, doing what I think the Real's ownership is doing. Plug in the ears when that horn comes on. Man, is it loud here. It's a great crowd out here tonight. I had a chance to see some members from uh, some other teams as well as some league board members as well here out to, to watch what should be a fantastic hockey game tonight. It already has been very tightly contested. We'll see if the Twisters can put up some more shots. They outshot the Reals. 44 to 16 in game one. The Reals are already at their total from that last game at 16 shots in the first. We are underway for the second period. That is brought to you by Terrico. Uh, as Puck played into the neutral zone to grave onto the stick of Jolliker. Trying to dangle past a Reals defenseman there in Jolliker. Puck held in by Dick, who plays it into the corner. It rims around and onto the stick of Jolliker now who gets rubbed out along the backboards in the corner closest to our broadcast angle. Held in, Hepner now with the shot, save made by Hallworth, rebound there, scores! And Jolliker runs into Bachnack afterwards. I believe he was the one that put it in. Right place, right time. And yeah, sloppy for the Reals to start things off. Good forecheck for the Twisters to start this period. And yeah, just a shot from the point by Hepner that Haworth could not handle cleanly. Results in a goal here as Jolliker got loose and put it in. As that goal brought to you by Terrico, our second period sponsor. Serving Manitoba producers for over 80 years in the agricultural industry. Be sure to check out their website at terrico.ca for more details on them. Into the neutral zone. Puck picked up by the Twisters. Sent into the Real zone. Sent out quickly, though. And then back into the Real zone. All the way down. No icing on the play. Reversed by Smith. Now cross ice. As Smith jumps up into the play. Trying to beat the ice, and he does. Smith now on this puck. So wheeling around, try dropping it, but picked up by Van Dines. Two on one, developing here. Van Dines has Gertzen with him, gets the puck back, scores! <laughs> 
Well, and a tornado of chances piling up for the Twisters to start off this period. Already up to seven shots in the game now. Three shots this period. And Van Dyne scoring his second of the game. Kyle, that is. Tried feeding the pass across to Gertzen. Went off the skate of Ariel and some puck luck there. Some good puck luck for this Twisters team as Van Dyne's one times the pass he gets back from himself. Here we go again. Bergman has a man with him. Not denied. That shot by Haworth. Bergman had Cody Clark with him. Sent back up to Plett. Riel's got to find a way to weather the storm here. Literally. As Haworth making a huge save. And a penalty coming up here at that. To the Twisters. First of the game as Davis loses his stick off of a slash. As this Riel's power play in Pemina Valley Twisters penalty kill will be brought to you by Terrico, of course. Three to one lead for the Twisters. We'll see what this Riel's team can do on this power play. Going one for four and scoring their only goal of the game in game one on the man advantage to McNaughton. As he just gets kicked out of the draw. One to McNaughton though. As the Riels look to work this round, trying to get it down low. Loose puck, trying to be picked up there by Nielsen. Turned over now onto the stick of DeGrave as he sends this all the way down. And the Riels take possession of it. Looking to skate this out, passed up. Nice move to the middle now, cut in. Loose puck picked up by Ethan Alsip. It's sent all the way down by the Twisters off of that turnover. Upon entry into the zone for the Reals, Hallworth out to leave it for a teammate. As this gets played off of the skates, protected by McNaughton for a moment before he got that taken away. Reals back in possession of it. They look to control, skating this puck up. Off of the skate of a twister now. Xander Carroll's giving chase on Balknet. Balknet can't quite get that cleanly across into the slot. Now that chance turned aside. Rebound there. Oh, nice save by Haworth. Turning away Xander Carroll's a rebound. Hepner all the way down. 46 seconds remain on this Real's power play. And all much to show for it so far. Haworth left that for Keating, as Keating leaves a short pass for one of his teammates. This gets, try to get sent in anyways. Connor Davis, offside, couldn't find his footing again. It was carried offside there by Ariel and Keating. Signaling for an offside here. 16, 23 remaining in the period. 28 seconds remaining on this Riel's power play. It's the offside, too blatant for the ref's liking. So the face-off draw will be all the way down into the Real zone, tied up. Riel's player in the draw. But they're able to get out with some success here. Played into the middle, feeding Hines. Hines to the net, dangling in, but nice defense there by the Twisters, staying on him. Collapsing on number 77. Picked up by Cole Davis now. Trying to get a short pass down low to McNaughton. McNaughton controlling. Five seconds remaining on the power play. Up to Bachnett. Across D to D. Keating. Dangles to the middle. His shot through and save made by Larock. And a frustrated Rial's group there. Alsip feeding that puck into the boards afterwards and disgust about that early whistle. It's been in the favor there of this Twisters team. So we are back to even strength. 17 to nine now, the shots for the Reals. It's been all Pemina Valley here so far. What a response from the visitors. Derek Weave loses the draw. Connor Davis, that shot gets through from Hines, but covered up again by Larocque. An interesting, you know, strategy from Braden Bernards, head coach of this Twisters team. 
you know, you got two fantastic goalies. Usually, you ride with the hot one, but they got two exceptional goalies that, I mean, you can really play any of them at any time, right? And I feel like that could be huge down the line, especially if you're able to make it through to the finals, having that extra rest for your goaltenders. If you can split them this way and you have success continuing so far. I mean, they're 5-0 and up until this point, leading 3-1, to pucks in the corner, two reels battling, it's shoveled out by the Twisters. Clark sends that into the netting. So we'll get a stoppage in play here. Draw coming back inside of the Twister zone. The Reals got fresh bodies on the ice. Nielsen against Bergman. Bergman wins the draw into the corner. Kyle Van Dines rims us around. Can't get it all the way out though. Finally it does. Poked out by Plett. Going down Plett. Trying to get that through. But a nice block by Ariel. Sliding down on the ice. Cody Clark gets that to the point. D to D. Jacob Carrolls goes back to Platt. That shot deflected high. Or goes back to Clark, sorry. As Jacob Carrolls gets it back. Sends that down low to the half wall. Now down low to Bergman. Bergman surveying options. Goes up to the point to Russell. Russell rims this around. Opposite point to Carrolls as he jumped up into the play. Now it's number 21 in Alex Van Dynes. Plays it up to the point uh, to Russell. Across to Jacobs. Back to Van Dynes. His shot turned aside. Riels just get it out. All the way out. And now giving chase will be McNaughton. That is on Carroll's McNaughton. Able to beat out that icing. Out there with Nielsen. Going to work. Cycle started to McNaughton. Cut off by Gertzen. Gertzen gets laid out. An interference call. Coming up here though, is Brzezinski gonna pay for this one? We'll send the Twisters on the man advantage for the first time in this game. As Russell skating up to Buck, or to Brzezinski afterwards, having some words for him. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see a bit of targeting on Brzezinski for the remainder of this period at least. But two for five, the Twisters went on the power play in the game one win. was two-thirds of their goals. This Twister's power play in Riel's penalty kill brought to you by Terraco, serving Manco producers for over 80 years in the agricultural industry. Sure to check out their website in the top right corner. Number 19 in Merrick Grave Gets this going from behind his own net after the Riel sent it down past the red line. Weeb tries rimming this to the opposite side off the dump and loose puck bobbling over. A twister in there, a bit of undisciplined from number 25 and Slade Southern. An interference here coming up. Yep, an interference penalty to number 25. So with that, we go to four on four. Effectively ending the twister's power play for now. Once Brzezinski comes out of the box, it'll be 28 seconds at most for this Reals team on the power play. It's the refs discussing with each other before this puck will be dropped. Connor Davis going up against Merrick DeGrave in the draw. A lot of top end players out here for both teams at even strength for the time being. As Davis tied up by DeGrave, loose puck will squirt out into the possession. Number three in Hepner tries feeding a pass up to the blue line but can't. Onto the stick now of Hines has that sticked away by DeGrave, Hines, hounding on the puck though, gets it back, oh that stripped away, and now Wee picks it up, going down the left side with speed, cuts to the complete opposite side now, has that sticked away on the backhand, DeGrave out there with him, he'll have that turned over, taken away by Hines, Hines looking to skate, looking to dangle through, does just that, oh can't beat Callan Russell on that last angle attempt, 
out there with him. Connor Davis able to win this puck battle for now, but picked up by the Twisters and sent opposite side. That just out of the reach of Hines. Took a bit of a funny bounce. It's Hepner who played it up to DeGrave. DeGrave now up that left side, protecting, gets a shot on that, turned aside by Haworth. 30 seconds remaining in the four on four now. The Reals looking to break this puck out. They do into neutral ice onto McNaughton's stick. Tries sending that down low, but had his stick disrupted with kind of fanned on it. Russell backhand feed into the middle onto the stick of Plett. Tries feeding that through, but can't get past the skates of a Reals player. Short little Riel's power play coming up now. McNaughton behind the back pass to Nielsen. Dangling his shot turned aside by LaRock. Nielsen now off, or McNaughton that is off the boards to himself. Gets that up to the point. 20 seconds of power play time left on the clock for this Riel's team. Nielsen from below up to the point. That played across Smith to Keaton. His shot through, oh, trying to go for a little backdoor redirection but couldn't get it. McNaughton now to the net, tipped wide. Just there, short little pass through the legs by Nielsen, but contested well by the Twisters. Smith had already exited out of the zone, couldn't hold the line. We'll get a whistle here. Signaling a stoppage in play. Eleven thirty-four remaining in this second period. The Reals with some of their best chances so far on that power play sequence. Vitalian on the draw, ended up winning it. Sent in by the Reals. Puck batted down by Hepner. He spins around, goes off the boards to Cohen Thomas. Thomas off the boards, but too far for Golford. Onto the stick of Hira, plays that off the boards. Puck in the air for a moment. Hand pass could be coming here. Nope, it's waved off. This puck gets sent back into the Twisters zone. Off of the boards to Thomas. His pass up to Golford now. Golford passed. Sent that in deep. Rimmed around now. And the Reals play that into the neutral zone. Picked up by Hapner. A little shimmy shake head fake there before going to Russell. Russell now spin away from danger on Dominico. As Russell continues up that right side, past the red line, sends it in deep. As the Real is able to get it out again, all the way down, should be for an icing, and it is just that. 10.30 remaining on the clock, as you saw there. Real is still up 19 to 11 in shots, but for context, they were up 16 to 4 in shots heading in to this period. It's been the Twisters who have Dictated more of the play this time around. They've been rewarded with two unanswered goals as well. At this lead with approaching halfway left in this second period. Skated up now. Dubois oh, gets, that's Dominico, gets some head contact in there. A twister on him. Dominico in the corner now. He'll get a penalty for retaliation. Going at it, he is not taken kindly to that hit laid on by the Pound of Valley Twister who did it in number five in Brockwood. Honestly surprised the referees don't call that on Wood. That was clear head contact, clear, clear targeting in my opinion. He puts the two hands up to hit him right in the head. Dominico's cage is off. But yet it'll be the Reals who go to the box. I mean, yeah, Dominico, you can make the argument, keep your head up, don't try to dangle, and things like that won't happen. An old school view on it, I mean, it's a dirty play nonetheless. Like, a two-hander, two fists right in the head. It's a coincidental at that. or it might not be. What is happening here is the referees sort these things out. The Riel's door is open right now. So Hines will go to the box. It will be the Riel's that are on the penalty kill. 
Hines will be serving the initial penalty that was given. That shot laid on net, turned aside by Haworth and cleared out by this Riel squad. 9.40.55 remaining in the period now. As Jacob Carrolls plays that up to Merrick DeGrave, who has some room to roam. Gets that sticked away for a split sack, sent all the way down into the twister zone. No icing, of course, since it is the Riel's penalty kill. As Jacob Carrolls plays this up, sent across ice for DeGrave. Puck along the boards, now controlled, now up to the point by Carrolls. Goes D to D, Carrolls gets it back. Carroll's now surveying, shot through in that wide of the net. Be held in at the opposite point by DeGrave though. It goes across to number 24 in Carroll's. Misses the net. Onto the stick of DeGrave again to Weeb. Weeb tried getting the pass there, interrupted at first, but got to Carroll's. Back up top to Weeb, fakes the shot, goes right to DeGrave in the corner. This puck played up back to the point. Weeb across ice to Jacob Carrolls. Hesitates, spins around back to Weeb. One time blast, that shot blocked away into the netting and out of play here. 30 seconds remain on the Real's penalty kill. I mean, honestly, if I was Dominico on that one, I just got hit in the head. I, I don't blame him for going after Wood like he did. As Riel's close to killing off that two minute penalty. This gets rimmed around by the Twisters. Onto the stick of Clark. This one held in by the Twisters for a split sack, but sent all the way out, finally as this is controlled by Hepner. Protecting, seven seconds remaining on the power play. Tries getting that down low, he does. Picked up by the Reals though, and this one sent all the way down, no icing. So, still no special teams goals in this one. So we are back to five on five hockey. Keating got that in. Sent in deep now by McNaughton. Giving chase in the corner. Russell got their way before him though. Now played onto the stick of Clark. Has some room to roam. Clark has Plett with him. Sends that in deep. But Ariel will be first one on it. Can't get it out though. Plett, nice job on the four check. Bergman also out there for the Twisters. Riel's in possession. Played into neutral zone but sticked away by Russell Callan. Or by Callan Russell. And into the Twister's bench, this puck goes. Get a stoppage with 7.25 remaining in the second period. Draw will be won by the Twisters. Pickpocket in there, it's Cole Davis making his way to the net. Gets it to the forehand shot, save made by LaRock. Alsip tried getting that back on net, but couldn't. That shot wider than that from about the bottom of that far face-off circle, the right face-off circle. Ends up out, turned over now onto the stick of Xander Carrolls. Just decides to send this in deep. Reversing it, the Reals try to. This will be intercepted by the Twisters. Finally sent out, Riel's kicking this out left. Onto the stick, Cole Davis takes a bump there from Hepner. Davis sticking with it though. Brzezinski out there on the four check, joining in. This gets played up the right side. Sam Alsup, or sorry, Smith that is, pinched in. It's behind the net. Trying to get this out, the Twisters finally do. And onto the stick of Xander Carrolls. Trying to dangle pass, can't quite. Played off the boards, onto the stick now of Connor Davis. Has players with him, to the net, rebound there, giving up, crash into the net. Number 89 in Brzezinski. But a nice job by LaRuck to secure that puck. 
Davis have a three on two developing. Didn't see much else to do with the puck from his point of view except to send it on net and almost did work out. Light little feather on net almost created a rebound but Laroque been really solid ever since that goal he gave up to Nate Hines. Hand pass will be called here. 6.03 remaining. In the second period brought to you by Terrico. Check out their website for all the details about what they offer as a brand at Terrico.ca, an agricultural company. Been doing work here, trusted by Manitoba producers in the agricultural industry for over 80 years. Turned over onto the stick of Davis. He drives this to the backhand, trying to to the net. Stops up. Tried sending that on net, but intercepted by Van Dynes on the block. Tries flipping this all the way down, Kyle did. Kyle Van Dynes gets the puck back. A little short pass to Bergman. Tries dangling through. Loses his balance. Platt with the shot that deflects out. And oh man, uh, not sure if it's a late call or not, but looks like Bergman will draw that penalty. Villarreal going to the box here. Another Twister's power play coming on Matt Smith. Hey, Bergman did dangle past him initially, got the puck through the stick. Matt Smith was not allowing him to get through, so he ends up taking a tripping penalty. We'll see how the Twisters can make work of this. Nice dive there by Ariel. This gets sent around the boards. Jacob Carroll's now jumping up into the play. Held in at the point, Merrick DeGrave across to Weeb. Weeb goes back across to Jacob Carroll's. Sent to the left face-off circle at the hash marks to Clark. Up top now, back to Weeb. Weeb out wide to DeGrave. Back up top to Weeb. His shot unloaded on, but wide of the net off the deflection. And another whistle stopping the play here. Minute 23 of power play time remaining. As both teams, I believe, will get changes. With a second under five to go here in this second period. Draw B, played to the point to the Twisters, won by them. Kyle Van Dyne sends this down low into the direction of Gertsen, trying to protect that along the wall. Played across to Russell. That shot from Van Dynes, got a piece of it there, it was Haworth. That shot from Hepner will be turned aside by Haworth again. And more pushing and shoving after the whistles. Safe to say these two teams do not like each other. Not one bit. You kind of feel something in this arena on this ice surface about to break out at any moment. The ref's doing a good job of intervening and getting into it to break things up. Mike Hepner, defenseman, in to take the draw as he ends up losing this one. Can't be sent out, though. Kyle Van Dynes holds it in. Played to Hepner. Back up top to Van Dynes. Kicks us out. Russell, his shot turned aside. Rebound. Slowed up there by Ariel, and we'll get a trip call coming up here to a Pemina Valley Twister. Which means we'll be four on four for the next 47 seconds. For the Reals, we'll get a minute and 13 at most of power play time. So it'll be Gertzen going to the box. With 423 remaining in the second. Could be huge for the Reals. They're able to survive this four on four and then potentially score on the power play. This Twisters team not giving them much though when they've had their chances. Across off the backboards now. Plett leaves this for Van Dynes. Across to Weeb as Weeb hesitates before entering into the zone. Now he stops up down low to Kyle Van Dynes. Back to Weeb trying to go there but Disrupted well. 
by St. Bonavis Riel. Jacob Carroll. Carroll's, that is, gets the puck back inside of his own end. He'll have this stripped away by Nate Hines as Hines goes to battle with him. Gets this to Connor Davis. That shot into the bread basket of Owen LaRock. With eight seconds remaining on this four on four. It's going to have to be these guys for the Riels. Difference makers like Hines and a Connor Davis that need to will this team back in. Effort like that could be contagious. Now, walking in, down Main Street, Alsip gets turned aside. Ethan Alsip, that is, as we are now onto a Riel's power play, 109 on the power play clock for them. Short little flip pass into the middle there for McNaughton, couldn't cradle it cleanly though, so it gets sent back into the neutral zone. Aaron Nielsen with it now. Back skating for a moment before sending a short little pass to Ethan Alsip, rims this all the way around, pass completed. Make, or Brzezinski gets this up to the point, Nielsen Looking up, Ice goes across now. Ethan Alsip, that tip through, almost full in the rock, but went wide of the net. Brzezinski tried feeding that back up to the point. Gets it back, that pass misfires though. Goes between both of his point men. It'll be picked up left for Aaron Nielsen now as he tries to wheel his way through. Puck bobbling in the neutral zone. Can't be picked up by either team. So he'll be sent all the way back down to the Real zone. Five seconds remaining. We'll be back to even strength here. Like right now. Back to five on five. The Reals look to work this up. Number 94. And Keating gets closed off there by Cody Clark. Puck ends up on the stick of Kyle Van Dynes. Brzezinski now in on it along the boards. Battling with the twister. Connor Davis, saucer pass over to Keating. Nice pass by him. Keating's shot turned aside by LaRock. Took a hit afterwards. This gets rimmed around again to Keating. Now he steps up on Clark, but Clark able to withstand that. Off of the glass, closest to us. Turned over again, Cole Davis to the net. That pass through the skates of Trot and picked up, turned over by the Twisters. Sent all the way in. And, oh, some rough stuff afterwards. A twister getting taken out to the boards. All of the defensemen and forwards on the ice now in that corner. Except for Southern, who's just kind of chilling at the top of the face-off circle. Same with Hallworth, staying in his own net. But seen a lot of this so far tonight. A minute 32 remaining in the second. 23 to 13, the shots in favor of the Riels. They've settled down more and gotten more quality chances as this period has gone along, but the start to it, not great for them. The Twisters came out flying. So we'll see Derek Weeb go into the box. For the Riels, it will be Wonder who, if they send anyone to the box here, could we be seeing a power play coming up? Nope, it will be coincidentals all around. Zachary Dominico goes to the box. Second time there, of course, if you missed it earlier. He lost his cool on Brock Wood after Wood two-handed him in the head. Somehow Dominico ended up getting the penalty. This time around it makes a bit more sense since it's uh, strictly coincidentals. Faceoff will be just outside of the Real zone and won by the Reals into the skates of Hines. He circles around, feeds a pass to number Two and Renville who sent that down deep. Uh, big hit there, attempted on by Connor Davis on Kyle Van Dines. This puck in the 
corner closest to us in the Real zone. Now the opposite corner up to the point. Kyle Van Dines, his shot wider than that off of the backboards. Onto the stick, Jolliker. He plays that to Jacob Carroll. Fakes the shot, tries going back to Jolliker with the pass, but couldn't feed him there. So now I think another punch in the head there. This time Trot laying it on Jolliker. That pass misses Trot. Threw his stick all the way down. This is sent. Xander Carroll's to the net. That shot, loose pocket there. Jolliker was waiting for it to settle down. Contested well. 30 seconds remaining in the period now. Now trying to skate up. The Riels delayed offside there for the Twisters, so the Riels a bit fortunate there. Played up towards the Twisters' blue line. Hines couldn't cradle this in cleanly. The intercepted pickpocketed by Hepner. He goes off the backboards. D to D, back into the neutral zone. DeGrave goes up by Xander Carroll's his long shot. Will be blocked there by Riel's defenseman. And with that, we went into this period tied up at one apiece. But a huge period for the Twisters has them up three to one. They still haven't trailed in this series as they opened up the scoring before the Riel's tied up in the first. The Riel's with better chances as the period went along. Had about seven shots in that period, 16 coming in. But this time around, it was the, the Twisters who you know, started off with way more shots than they had previously. But as the period went along, uh, the Real was able to, to weather the storm. Literally, a uh, lot less high danger chances and more high danger chances created their way for. Uh, Laroque's been really good in net tonight, uh, despite that one goal he gave up early on. Or couldn't handle that rebound cleanly. He's had a good team in front of him too for good support. And yeah, we finally did see some special teams. Some power plays. Some power plays that got eliminated due to the other team taking the penalty and going to four on four. And yeah, both teams throughout it as they got more comfortable on the power play working pucks around now looked more dangerous. So should be an entertaining next 20 minutes of play, 20 miles. Both of these teams getting really chippy too after the whistle. I mean, we saw it too with, didn't I say there would be a bit of a fight uh, in Dominico and Wood going out of there after Dominico got blatantly hit in the head. Still baffles me that he got that penalty on that one. But it's what it is for the Reals. They gotta fight through the refing, even if it isn't to their liking. Ain't gonna go much further if that's what you're focused on. And what they should be focusing on is getting that next goal and see what happens from there. Strong start to this period count up for them would be the key. Zamboni's making their way onto the ice. This second period was brought to you by Terrico, serving Manitoba producers for over 80 years in the agricultural industry. Sure to check out their website at terrico.ca. Thank you to them for supporting us here on the network, G Show Productions, and for supporting and being an official sponsor of Manitoba Major Junior Hockey League Hockey. The Twister's up three to one, 20 minutes away from joining the Canucks in terms of being another team up two to nothing in the final four. We'll be back in about five to seven minutes here for updates on the goal scores, assists, leaders in that period and uh, the call of this third period coming up on gshow.ca for MMJHL playoff game day.
And welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, into the Southdale Community Center, Southdale Arena here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're just after 9 o'clock, 9.02 right now. Heading into the third and final period of regulation in this one, where it was the Pemina Valley Twisters who took over in the first part of that second period. The Riels started to find their game more as that period went along. Quite a bit of penalties in that period too after seeing none in the first. Things of course getting chippy. But yeah, the Twisters a period away if they can hold this lead. From going up two to nothing in this best of seven Final Four series. Of course the Reals first appearance in the Final Four since 2014-15 when they went on to win the championship. Shots 23 to 13 now in the game. And yeah, in terms of the penalties, five for the Twisters in that period as well as five for the Reals. Slashings, interferences, roughings, and unsportsmanlike to Zachary Dominico. Shots were 9-7 to seven in favor of the Twisters in that period. And the goal scorers, Lucas Jolliker, his first of the playoffs, assisted by Mike Hepner and Merrick DeGrave. 35 seconds in with Kyle Van Dyne scoring an unanswered goal. First third of the postseason, second of the game. Not even a minute later, a minute 27 into that period. So we are underway here with the puck dropped for this third period of action brought to you by goaltenders. Your goal is personal video review service as this puck tipped in past the red line by Nielsen. Block there by Clark as this one gets all the way out. Haworth out of his net, plays a short pass to Hira. Off of the backboards he goes to Keating all the way down for an icing. As we'll get a face off here inside of the Real Zone. So we played into a bench. So a face off back inside of the Riel zone. Samaritan Grave wins it. Back to Kyle Van Dines. Jacob Carroll sends that down low, rimmed around to DeGrave. He gets cut off. But that pass intercepted. Jolliker tried playing it to the net, but a nice stick there by Ariel to disrupt. Played up into the neutral zone. Brzezinski gets taken out. No call on the play. He gets hit from behind. As Jolliker in on the four check for Pemina Valley now. As Connor Davis tried playing this out, can't. Pass a twister holding the line. As that puck gets sent across to Connor Davis. He'll be contested there by Jolliker. Twisters back on the counter attack to Grave. Tried sending that to the net. He did, but wide of it. That was picked up by number 19 in Dubois. Played it to Sam Alsip, who shot. Gets gloved down there by number 35 in Owen Laroc. Speaking of the goaltenders, this third period brought to you by goaltenders. Like I said, your goalie's personal video review service. Be sure to check out their website at gordytomlinsongoalies.ca for more information. Uh, basically a one-on-one -on -one video Zoom call service with a Winnipeg Jets WHA 1.0 ex-goaltender. As this draw won by the Twisters, Hapner spinning away from the 
pressure there from the Reals. This gets sent all the way down deep into the zone as Lee Cole Davis sending this to Sam Alsip. He's into the zone, he delays. Backhanded down low into the direction, I believe of Carson Dubois. Or it might be Nate Hines. That puck kept in for the time being by the Reals. As this puck gets sent out, now here it goes. The Twisters now trying to get that through. Thomas gets the puck back on his stick to the net. Rebound there. But the Twisters can't put it away. Nice defense there. Staying tight on them were the Reals. Open man in the slot. Thomas, that puck into his skates. Not cleanly there if it was. Potential. Great A chance for the Twisters. Dropped over, Gulford, his shot will be turned aside by the pad there of Haworth. Another good start to this period for this Twisters team coming out with a lot of pace. That shot in on net, turned aside by Haworth. Left it for Hira, he's looking to go for a skate. Playing this up the right side into the neutral zone now. Sent in deep by the Reals. Now picked up by McNaughton in the corner. McNaughton protecting, sends this, keeps this down low, that is, below the goal line. And the net is way off. Is using his, his arms and his back, Laroc able to put it back into the bearings. This water bottle also on the ice, picking that up to put it on the top of the net, takes a sip, puts it back, and gets ready for this upcoming face-off draw for this Reals team. McNaughton on to take it. Reals losing the draw. This will be rimmed around, pinching up a Reals defenseman. Keeps this in, and Keating, there's a penalty here coming up now to the Twisters. So we will leave goaltenders on the screen here with that for the special team sequence coming up. Be Mike Hepner who takes this penalty on the trip. Sending the Reals onto their sixth, or maybe not their sixth, but sixth penalty taken by the Twisters in this one, Keating. Feeds it over to Connor Davis. Connor Davis in the corner, spins away from the pressure, goes back up top to Keating, backhand pass over to Davis. Down low, now it's back to Davis again. Down low into the low slot side of the net, turned aside there by Laroque. He's falling in his crease. Keating trying to get that across, but can't quite. So sends. The puck back into the corner, down below. Keating now holding the zone. His shot on net, turn aside, Laroque, the rebound! Oh, can't quite put it in, the Reals with a great chance there to do so. Another shot coming, Laroque this time smothers that rebound. With a minute 11 remaining on the Reals, man advantage. Man, I really did think, and so did the Reals that they put it in for a moment there. But heads turn to the ceiling in disbelief. So we get another face off coming up here inside of the twister zone. On to take it. Leave Ty McNaughton. He'll end up losing that. Dick tries sending it out. He can't. Controlled by the Reals. Along the boards closest to our broadcast angle. Up top to Bachneck. Sends that down low right face off circle. Bachneck gets it back. Nielsen now with a one timer and turned aside into the bread basket of Laroque with 54 seconds of power play time remaining now for this Real squad. McNaughton this time winning the draw cleanly back to Bachneck. He goes to Nielsen. Nielsen spins around, gets it up top to Bachnet again. Bachnet fans on the pass at first. Can't get it past the stick of the Twister defending, which was number 12. And Cohen Thomas. The Reals now look to break out 500 or 200 feet 
the other way. McNaughton up the right side, protecting the puck wide. Still has it out the other side, up top, as this goes across. Bocknecht. Up at the point, his shot now. He unloads it, rebound there. Reels can't get on it as the Twisters clear this away. Sent in to the corner, that area. As Hallworth banging on the ice, signifying that this power play coming to an end, and it will. We're back to even strength. Half wall, Nielsen, his shot ripped, but turned aside by Laroc. It's the Riel still controlling it, Nielsen. Protecting this puck, goes up top. That shot turned aside into the backboards off of the paddle of Laroc. Up top to the point again. That shot, Ethan Alsip can't get it through. Alsip just holds the line. No offside on the play. As the Reals still holding the twisters in their own end. Into the opposite corner now, giving chase Nielsen. Russell. Plays that across to a teammate. All the way into the Real zone now. No icing on the play. Player coming on there for the Twisters. Clark try getting that to the front of the net quickly to Bergman, but couldn't. Nate Hines now looking to work with some speed. Busting through the middle there. Hines trying to dangle through. Can't. Uh, Real trying to pick up the loose puck, but couldn't. As this gets sent back down into St. Boniface's end. Higher off of the boards. Into the neutral zone. Turned over. Van Dynes now, Kyle, that is shot on net, turned aside. Van Dynes into the play now. Looking wrap around at first, but elects not to. Up to the point, Takeros gets it back. Van Dynes, his shot tips and ends up wide of the net. And all the way into the neutral zone again. Van Dynes behind the back pass. He goes off for a change. Left it there for Weeb, who sends it down deep. Three L's look to get this puck out. They do. Into the possession of Sam Alsip now. He delays. Shot on net. That turned aside by Laroc. Beauty made by him. Along the boards in that corner you can't see right now. As it clears out all the way into the neutral zone. As Dominico played it back. Three L's send it in deep, Laroc out to play this puck. Leave it for a teammate. Weeb with a nice little one-touch pass to number 11, and Jolliker, second goal scorer in this game. It'll be DeGrave who gets pickpocketed there by Connor Davis, who tries to work up that right side with speed. Elects to dump it in and try getting to that puck first, but couldn't. We picked up now the Twisters, sending this puck in. That off of a twig, couldn't be cradled effectively. Now Callan Russell played that across. Big hit laid on there on a twister in their own end, but they're able to get this puck and work this out off the boards. That one too far. And oh no, there's a real down on the ice reeling. Not too sure who it is. As we pan away from that for now. as we will meet our mic for just a moment. Oh no, it looks like he can't put any weight on his leg. It might be his right, it might be his left. Didn't quite see what happened. I'm sure you can see it maybe in the replay if we caught it. If you go back, uh, that'll be number 19, I believe, in Carson Dubois, who goes off. Uh, it's just a sight you don't like to see. You never want to see it. I hope the best of recoveries to Carson. Your health comes first, obviously. And now the Real is gonna be down a man for the rest of this game in Carson Dubois. 
Hard worker on this Real's team draw will be won by the Twisters. That shot from the point goes wide. Off the backboards, bounce in favor of the Twisters. Xander Carroll is now in front to Golford, but he was covered up well by two Reals. Golford now spinning away from the trouble, trying to protect this puck. Now McNaughton gets on him, still on it, as Golford finally gets that poked away from himself as Russell jumps in to the play to keep this cycle going, keep the pressure going. Golford spinning away again. He's evading all these reels. Xander Carroll gets put on his backside. As now puck flipped into the neutral zone onto the stick of Nielsen. Trying to dangle through. Nielsen almost does. Oh, almost. But not quite the finish that the reels were looking for. It's onto the stick now. Xander Carroll to DeGrave. DeGrave shot blocked. Trying to get to that puck again. But couldn't quite get there. Puck not strong enough to get out. Cal Van Dines. Able to get there first. Feeds it to Carroll's back to Kyle Van Dines. Van Dines back over to Xander Carroll's. Tried feeding that across, but a nice stick by the Reals to disrupt in that lane. It's over to Jacob Carroll's. Now to Van Dines again. Hit shot from the point. Rebound there. Oh, and a glove save. A little in mill action from Ashton Haworth. A huge one. With just over halfway remaining in this period, 10:24, and with that, goaltenders, your goalie's personal video review service, the sponsor of this third period, wanted to put that on screen after a huge save from number 31. That wide of the net off of the backboards. Brzezinski now picks it up, goes off of. Boards tried feeding it to a teammate. Stepik still on it. Tried sending that down low, but couldn't. Gets flipped up into the neutral zone. Bachnack played it over to Stepik. He sends it back into the twister zone. They go D to D, but that pass missing. Ends up going off of the helmet, I believe, or the shoulder of Kyle Van Dines. Sent all the way in deep to the Real zone where they look to break this out. Alex Dominico flips this up into center. Connor Davis couldn't catch up to it. Goes off of a Riel in the neutral zone. Twister's trying to break this out. They can't quite do it. Now Merrick DeGrave tried funneling through the middle, but couldn't. Puck ends up into the Riel's bench. As we'll get another face-off draw and set of the Reals and DeGrave on to take it up against Nate Hines. So with the lone goal tonight for the Reals, Hines loses the draw. It's played up to Hepner at the point. Plays that down low to Grave to Jolliker. His shot turned aside. Actually, I don't think Hallworth could see that one. I think it might have deflected off of a body. It gets down low to DeGrave. He waits before going to the point to Hepner. Back to DeGrave. That one picked off now by Hines. He's able to get this out for the time being, but not controlled. Now the Reals control and just past the red line. Bachnack sends that in deep. Giving chase. A Real on it. Dick was first one on it for the Twisters. Now onto the tape of Derek Weave, who, oh, he sidesteps a Real at center ice there. Leaves a draw pass for DeGrave, but that couldn't be connected on. Callan Russell goes D to D. Weep calling it for it in the neutral zone. Past the red line, just deflects it through his legs. A little tweener action on that redirect. It's Nate Hines, a nice crisp saucer pass to McNaughton. So McNaughton works this down low into the direction of Nielsen. Too far for him. It's a twister in great position. Gertzen past the red line, off of the boards. And in deep. Plays it into the slot. Now that shot. Oh, another big save by Haworth. This time on Southern. Southern didn't get the most of that like he wanted to. But still a shot that almost fooled Haworth. And he's able to just survive it. Squeezing that glove. Making the goaltender sponsor proud. 
Gordy Tomlinson would be very pleased with those two saves. As Davis now on it, Connor Davis loses the puck, trying to make a move to the middle. Twisters try sending that on net, but it'll be intercepted. Brzezinski tried dangling through, but couldn't. Now sent in deep, sticking the paddle out Hallworth to stop this one, as the Reals decide to reverse it. Keaton now trying to cut inside on Southern in his own end, and Southern sends that towards the net, which ended up being kind of dangerous. It'll be Alex Dominico with some time. Ends up going to Keating. Up the boards, Keating goes. It's played up into the middle in the neutral zone, that is. The Riels still down by two, 7-11 remaining in this third period of action. Got to get a quick goal here to give themselves the best chance to come back. I've had trouble establishing the Twister zone for quite a while here. Yes, able to get pucks out, but the Twisters playing really good defense in the neutral zone. Forcing the Reals to dump it in, if anything. And just really good defense on that back end to, uh, you know, eliminate any four-check chance that the Reals are trying to provide for themselves. Speaking of, Plett now on the four-check sends that to the net. Bergman with a nice try to tip that C did. Funny bounce that puck, puck took on the ice there for a split sec. Hyra picks it up, plays that into the neutral zone. Now this loose puck will be picked up by McNaughton. Good defensive stick there by the Twisters. Played into the netting though. So we will get a face off since that was directly off of a Twisters player's stick. Inside of the real zone. Or inside of the Twisters zone here. Offensive zone face-off draw coming up for St. Boniface. So this draw be a bit of a tie-up for the Twisters, but they can't get it out. That puck sent to the net, but blocked up by the Twisters. 6.20 remaining now. Sent in deep. Down low. Riel's trying to get a cycle going, but cut off there by the Twisters. Holding at the line, though. Defenseman for the Reals, that into the slot, misses everybody. Hyra loads up, his shot blocked. Nice job by the Twisters to stay with that one. Leave it to Renville out for this St. Boniface team. It is him. C goes down low. Onto the stick of McNaughton. Nielsen filling at the point there for Renville. He tries shooting and block shot, gets it back though. Nielsen, another shot, that one through and cover up. By Laroque. So that draw won by the Reals, or by the Twisters that is sent all the way down, beating the ice in there as Cohen Thomas gets rubbed out by Ethan Alice. And Bonknet picks up the puck, chipped out by the Reals. Here's a chance for them to potentially work. Reals now coming in, that shot from Cole Davis, wide, deflected on, off of a twister stick. That gets back into the neutral ice. That one sent on net, turned aside Cole Davis with the shot. Riel's along the boards, trying to work this down low to Davis again, and they do. To the net, that one deflecting off of something. Picked up by Bachnet, his shot to the net. Laurent loses sight of it, but the Riel's can't put it in. The whistle blown shortly after. It's a swarm of bodies, both Riel's and Twisters. Crowd around that net. Been a few of those from Laurent again tonight. I mean, I praise him about how great of a game he's had. But there have been those times where a puck looks like it's about to squeak by him, but he's been surviving on every single one of them except for one. Was of course credited to Nate Hines, the only goal the Reals have in this game. Backhand, oh nice pad saved by Laroque. Looked like that one almost sque squeaked through. Laroque out of his crease behind the net, plays that to a teammate. Under five remaining in this third period now. Played to the middle, intercepted though. 
by Ariel. It's back in their own end. They look to break out. Trot tried playing that to the middle, but he'll have his puck be disrupted into the shin pad of a Twisters player. Now onto the stick of Bucknett. His pass gets intercepted there by DeGrave. A glove down now by Ariel. Is that sent into the neutral zone, back into the Twisters end again. Bucknett feeds a pass. And circling back is Brzezinski. Saucer pass over to Dominico, who sends that down low deep. Connor Davis pressuring LaRock. He's able to spin away from Davis. Impressive stuff there from number 35. Uh, St. Boniface sends it in deep again. Down low, sent out of the Twister's end. And sent in again by Dominico. This time on net, turned aside by LaRock. Played up into the neutral zone. Keating now with it. Plays it across to Dominico. Dominico into the neutral zone. His pass unable to be cradled in there by Hines. Ends up into the glove of LaRock. 313 remaining. That's 40 to 21 in shots now for the Reals, but doesn't matter that much. They are still down. Three to one in this one. In danger. Going down two to nothing in the series here. Of course, losing Carson Dubois to what looked like a nasty, nasty injury. It's from the point Alsip his shot wide. Play to a real again. To the opposite point. That shot Alsip through but glove down by LaRock. We'll get another stoppage here. Well, it really has been an entertaining game from both of these goaltenders. I mean, even Hall, though Haworth has led in three in this one, he's made two spectacular saves in this period. And Laroque, I mean, he's been surviving, looks steady as well. He's done it all tonight. Of course, out dueling Haworth to this point. Could Laroque be earning player of the game here? Well, you'll have to wait and find out for our post-game show. Be presented by Mick Cannon Fasters and Tools. A timeout called here by Zach Franco looking for something. Won't be a surprise here if we see Haworth pulled very shortly. Once the Reals get possession of it, if they can get possession of it. And for this Twisters team, they're going to focus on what they've been doing for most of this period. Getting the saves from LaRock. Trying to clear out the rebounds and just getting this puck out of the zone and enforcing for the Reals to try to break in continuously again and again for the last two minutes and 44 seconds of this regulation period. And Zach Franco elects to go really aggressive. Pulling Hallworth right away. So six on five here. For as long as it can be for the Reals, as that draw will be won by them. Almost tipped out there by Thomas, but held in by the Reals. Saucer pass over. Trying to get it to the middle, but can't hit a twister player on the way through. Bucknett sends that down low. Into the corner, Connor Davis. Sent it in the direction of McNaughton. He's battling along with the twister along the boards there. Now on the ground, or on the ice, I should say. Trying to just eat that puck. I believe it's Mike Hepner. It's hard to see the numbers from down here. So I'm actually on the opposite end here calling this game. If you'd uh, like to know where we do call these from at South Dale Arena, we got the camera closer to the middle, of course. But our view is from the Reals end of things. So hard to always make out the numbers and who's who. I do see two twisters, though, in the corner there. Three Reals were there, but not enough to keep this puck in. Coming up on two minutes remaining in this game. Hines wheeling through, trying to wheel through the middle, but he'll have this intercepted. Weeb has it pickpocketed off of his stick. 
Gets it sent in deep. Twisters now flipping this back into the neutral zone. The MO for them, just get pucks out. Survive a swarm here, hits a body of a real, almost a good chance for them, but they couldn't make up on that puck look. Into the slot, that one turned aside by Twister's defense and now out as they cleared a minute 33 remaining. Aaron Nielsen, backhand pass, that one quickly up to McNaughton now into the zone. Connor Davis picks it up, trying to send that to the net and does find netting, but over the glass behind the net. I think it was deflected though, yep. The refs keeping it inside of the twister zone for the time being. V. Nielsen on the draw. This draw won by the Reals. Hines at the point, his shot through, deflected, rebound there, side of the net, Lerock. There to make the save. So now there's some pushing and shoving. Really only pushing from the Reals player on Bergman. From Brzezinski. Got to be a positive nonetheless for this Reals team if you're looking for any in this one. You know you're close to losing this. You have outshot them 43 to 21. Shots weren't even close in that first period. Is this puck sent all the way down? Should be an icing on the play, and it is. One oh seven remaining. Draw will be back inside of the Twister zone. A Riel and Twister square up in the draw. Be won by the Riels. Sent down low, battling there. Connor Davis, I believe, out in front. There, Hines at the point, unloads the shot, but oh, just wide of the net. Held in though by Nielsen. He waits, fake shot blocked. Can't get through, and this one all the way down once again. Two Riels giving chase on it, and down for an icing with 45 and a half remaining. Another face-off coming up here. As I believe it'll be Nate Hines on to take it for the Reals. All I can see from down here, it'll be won by him. That shot blocked by a twister. Brzezinski, no, his shot, oh, goes way too high. Misses the net, but held in by the Reals still. 34 seconds remain. It's been all Reals here in these last Three minutes held in at the point. That shot through, but can't quite make it on net. That drop back, Nielsen. It goes over to Hines now. Hines, his shot, tried dragging pass, but could not. Another block by the Twisters. 16 seconds remaining. Riel's running out of time in this one as it gets deflected out. Ten and a half seconds on the clock. And, uh... Barring something crazy, like two quick goals, which has been highly unlikely from what I've seen all year in this league. Looks like the Twisters will be bringing home a two to nothing series lead into Morris over the weekend on Saturday. That shot blocked once again, and with that, the undefeated playoff streak continues now to six and zero oh for the Pembina Valley Twisters. They never trailed in this one. Shots were basically flipped in this one compared to last game, where the Twisters outshot the Reals 44 to 16. Shots on the scoreboard right now showing at 43 to 21 in favor of the Reals. And yeah, I mean, they could have had a lot more there at the end. There was like five blocks there by this Twisters team. I mean, a great effort from them all night long on the defensive side of things from their goaltending to their players blocking shots and for the Reals they were buzzing they had a lot of zone possession in the offensive zone throughout parts of this game 
They were trying to change up the angle. Toe dragging past the defenseman trying to at that, but still the Twisters found ways to get blocks in. You know, both of these teams had some good chances on the power plays, but overall both played pretty good on the kill. And yeah, for this Twisters team, I mean, they were opportunistic on their chances. They got outshot 16 to four in that first. They end up with the first goal of the game. You know, they come out flying in that second period and also started really well in that third. And I mean, they had a rock in the back of the net. Uh, no pun intended, Owen LaRock, what a game from him. Uh, earning his first start of this series and making good on it. He makes, if these shots stand, 42 saves on 43 shots against, really impressive stuff. And some good high quality shots at that from this Reals team. You know, some where there were some routine saves. Uh, Ashton Haworth, gotta commend him, even though he let in three goals on the 21 shots face. Two really beautiful saves in that last period. But yeah, this is our post-game show. We're gonna keep it short here. Brought to you by Mick Cannon Fasteners and Tools, your one-stop shop for all your industrial needs. We're gonna go with Nate Hines for the St. Boniface Reals. He scores the only goal in this game, and Nate was you know, generating good offensive chances all night long for this Reals team. Uh, we saw his ability to toe drag and release tonight, which, uh, you know, is always fun to watch players changing up the angles when they shoot. And yeah, just his willingness on that first and only goal of the game by the Reals was, you know, great to see. Earned him some points towards getting player of the game and uh, did a good job, you know, also being a bit physical out there, not laying big hits, but rubbing players out, taking pucks away with the stick, and really driving play at a lot of points tonight for this Reals team. He's player of the game for the Reals, and for the Twisters, I was going to give it to Kyle Van Dines. He was pretty impressive tonight, but I mean, when a goaltender makes 42 saves on 43 shots in a close game like this, that's usually the difference, and Owen LaRock ended up being the difference tonight for the Pemina Valley Twisters. Uh, there were times, yeah, where he lost out of the puck, but he battled throughout this whole game. That's what you want to see from your goaltender in the playoffs, and also made some really good routine saves. The technique was there, and he made, you know, a few big saves at that throughout this hockey game. So, Owen LaRock gets his first start of this Final Four series, makes good on it, making... Uh, Braden Bernard's head coach look really, really good uh, here tonight when he goes away from Logan ends once again. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see who gets the start coming up next game, coming up this weekend. Uh, the bracket, as we show you now, not fully updated at this point, but both top seeds up two to nothing in their respective series. Uh, we'll be back here at Southdale next week for game four, and if possible, We'll be back here for a game six when that does come. We're going to see if we can get into uh, at McDonald tomorrow night to try to broadcast game three of the St. James Junior Canuck series and the Charleswood Hawk series. Thank you to Char uh, to Mick Cannon Fasters and Tools for sponsoring the post game show and for the first period of this game, as well as to goaltenders and to Terrico for being official sponsors of another MMJHL game day playoff broadcast. Uh, stay tuned. We might be broadcasting tomorrow at Ab McDonald for game three as the Canucks will look to go up three to nothing in that one, regardless if we're broadcasting it or not. Charles will looking to cut into that two nothing series lead tomorrow on the road and what really is a must win for them. And a must win really, I'd say, for the Reals coming up this weekend. Do they get back into this series and cut it down? Well, you'll have to wait and see. Check out mmjhl.ca for all the details, all the scores, as they do have live scoring and all that great stuff. But, yeah, tonight, the Twisters outshot, but surviving in their own end. Great performance from Owen LaRock in his first start of this series. Opportunistic on their chances. And getting some huge blocks, too, especially in the last three minutes of this hockey game. The Real is frustrated, but they'll be looking to bounce back hard, you'd have to think, coming up this weekend. 
I'll have to wait and see everybody. I've been your play-by-play -play commentator and host of the pregame show and postgame show, Graham the G-Show Forsyth. Thank, for, thank you for choosing G-Show Productions on gshow.ca for what was another great MMJHL playoff game day matchup. Twisters win this one 3-1, to one, take a 2 to nothing series lead. Two games away now, or two wins away now from the championship series. Good night, everybody.